Allow us to meditate on the words that you have given us. Allow us to understand what you have not only given us, Lord God, but just to, just to be ministered to, Lord God, to open up our hearts and our souls and our minds, and knowing that you have our back regardless of what we're going through, Lord God, and to be shepherds of your word, that not only in the, in, in the house of the Lord, Lord God, but outside of these walls, Lord God, where the work needs to be done. As I play the background, I ask for your Holy Spirit to be for, bring forth and just <clears throat> allow each and every one of us to understand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Our scripture for this afternoon is Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, verse 1 through 9. And it reads, The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into the ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood at the shore. And he spoke to them many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up. And because they had no deepness of earth, and when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had not root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some of a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who has an ear to hear, let him hear. Amen? Amen. What I wanted to say to the church today is how blessed you are to know the Word of God. To know that we can understand its meaning and have the ability to overcome anything that comes against us. Some of us are so, or I should say some people, are so quick to go to the doctors and get medicated by anxiety, depression, or uh, stress, or what have you. But the, 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 the fact of it remains is that they have nowhere to go or they don't have, they have trust issues. So because they don't know the word of God, when the, when the world starts crashing upon them, they may start looking to be medicated uh, without having the word of God to be their healer. And to know what the scriptures say is when what seems to be, <clears throat> uh, when we feel that we are going through something, and we know what the scriptures say, we can medicate ourselves through the word of God. For example, Isaiah 40, verse 31 says, But those who hope on the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. See, when you know the word of God, you look at the, the issue and one of the issues is that even though I'm tired, if I hope on the Lord, then I will be renewed. If I hope on the Lord, then I will gain my strength. If I hope on the Lord, then my, I will soar like wings of eagles. If I hope on the Lord, I can run and I can walk without being tired. But the key word is hope in that scripture. Proverbs 3, verse 6, 5 through 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your pathway straight. But the key word in this scripture is trust in the Lord mm -hmm. with all your heart. If we don't trust in the Lord with all our hearts, what happens is we'll go by our own understanding. And then we succumb to whatever wind of doctrine 
or whatever issues that we go through will end up falling short because of the fact that we trusted in everything else but in God. And it amazes me that we can trust in man, we can trust in everything else but mm -hmm. God. And, you, and there's a lot of people that don't even look at it. But when you stop your car and you go on your way to go to work, go to church, go to the school, school, go to the supermarket, you have to trust in other people mm -hmm. that are on that highway. You have to trust people to take care of your kids while you're not there at the school. You have to trust that they're teaching your children a, a good education. You have to trust in the supermarket that they're not doing anything bad to the food. You have to trust in a restaurant that nobody does anything to whatever you want. You know, you know what I'm saying? But when it comes to trusting in God, we have a problem. But to be in depth in the scriptures, to be uh, involved in what this word says and apply it to your life, it changes the game in your walk. You don't have to have to worry about your left or your right or even looking over your shoulder because we, we as, as uh, people in Christ, we look towards what he is going to do and not what others try to promise us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, John 14, 27, it says, Peace I give unto you. I do not give it to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. And again, the key word is do not. Because when you do, we start getting afraid and we start uh, feeling that things are falling short then we end up missing the promises that God has given us with peace. And this last verse, which is very, very important, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that, that is within you than he that's within the world. The question I ask you is, is he greater within you? How much power do, do you give Christ over your life to overcome the world? See, when we walk this walk, we can't just take, take, uh, just haphazardly do this walk. We have to go in it with full force. Granted, we take our time with baby steps so we don't fall, or if we do fall, we fall forward. And knowing that God is going to get out, uh, give us the strength to get back up. But we have to understand that if God is greater than anything else, that he's going to allow us to overcome all our issues, then we have to understand and, and put it in our, in, our, in our walk. So that others that don't know who God is, they see who, who we are and who we are. Our walk with God only works when we apply his word to our life. Our walk with God only, only works. works when we apply his word, this word. Amen. So, this is more than do's and don'ts. This is more than wills and wants. This is our only medication to our spiritual walk or our spiritual life. And this is the only medication that will spiritually heal us. Now, I'm here, granted, people have anxieties and, and stress and depression, and I'm not taking away what doctors are supposed to do. But there's so many people that are quick to just run to the hospital, run, and they want that quick fix. Or they can't afford medication, they'll get something else on the phone, or in a living store, or what have you. Because they don't have what you have. They don't have the possession of knowing what the scriptures are to encourage one another as we talk about, to uplift that one another as we talk about. But we have to understand that in this walk that we have, we have to apply it to our lives. Amen. And we have to understand that what we have, it's a great possession that we possess. Because most people, they can't run to the scripture and try to find out how to apply it to their lives. They'll go by hearsay, they'll go by what other people uh, will give them bad advice, 
And when that happens, then they get more in debt to what they are, what they're trying to get out of. Now I give you the I gave you the scripture of Matthew about the seed because as we as Christians or as we as those that have followed Christ, we have to understand that we are the sowers. As the pastor was talking to Brother Bob this morning, I'm just snickering because it this everything's coming together. Because this was the sermon that they were actually talking about. So I couldn't really delve into that conversation because then it would be like me uh, saying it over and over again. But one of the things that I that I uh, want to say is that when we as followers of Christ, we give this word and yes, there are people that are going to take it and run with it and apply it to their lives. There are going to be people that will take it and the world will overcome them. There will be people that will take it and we get all excited and then when something has a, uh, they, they take a turn and that excitement isn't exciting no more, something else is glittering and gold and they drop that seed, then it becomes dead. But what I say to you is how do you apply that seed? If this is the seed, you're the sower, and you're applying the gospel, which the, the, what got you to, to give the seed. Because in order for you to give the seed, you have to understand the seed. Right. You have to apply it in your life to order to, in order to actually take the investment to give it to somebody. So with what I'm saying is, how are you giving that seed? To, the way you give that seed that's how long that, that seed will end up taking root. But a lot of times what we do is, we, instead of giving a relationship with Christ, we'll give the seed of religion. And when that happens, for example, if I am going to preach the gospel and I'm sowing the seed and I take this, this heavy, heavy rock, and I give it to Sister Fluff. She can look at it as a weight to add to her more problems, or she can look at it as an anchor to build a foundation with. So I give Sister Flo this seed, and I say, this is out of love, this is out of mercy, this is out of grace, this is out of patience. This rock right here will get you through time and time again. And she'll accept it or she'll reject it. It's either going to be too heavy for her because she doesn't, I didn't explain to her what love's all about. I didn't explain to her what mercy's all about. I didn't explain to her what patience and kindness and all the characteristics of God that God is going to be ordained through me to give to her. I didn't explain that. But what I do is, now, and when I do explain it to her and she understands it, then she's going to go to the next person and pass that seed. She becomes the sower and gives the same type of seed that I've applied to her. Amen? Amen. But see, what people do, what people do is they take this and they go and say, now I'm the sower. Again, I'm the sower. And I give this seed to Sister Flo. And before I let go, Instead of giving her love, mercy, grace, and patience, I go, listen, this is a, a seed because I know that you may be getting intoxicated all the time. I know that you're sleeping around. I know that you're cussing out people. But deal with this and maybe you'll get better. In Jesus' name, amen. So she takes that seed. She don't know nothing about love or it gets corrupted or confused. She'll end up hitting somebody over the head the way I hit her over the head. I gave her problems with the seed instead of healing her with the problems with the seed. So now she takes it and hits somebody over the head with it. And that person takes it and hits it over somebody's head with it. And Christ ain't got nothing to do with that seed. This no longer becomes a seed of the gospel. It becomes a seed of gossip. It becomes a seed of hearsay. 
because it gives a false sense mm -hmm. of security of who God is. It True. gives a false sense of security of who Christ is. It gives a false sense of security of who the characteristics of what God is an example or exemplifying. Amen? Amen. So, I would give you this seed in, 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 in uh, but I need this to go back home. <laughs> <laughs> but you can hold on to that <laughs> but when we as as Christ followers, we have to understand that we're going to use this this scripture to follow the scripture in our life and apply it to our life, then we use that rock as a foundation, as a cornerstone to build, not to destroy, not to point fingers, not to uh not to beat around the bush and say everything else. What, what Christ is actually doing in, in your life. Because that's the problem. We don't use our lives as an example to prove ourselves to Christ. Mm -hmm. We don't say, oh, you know, all the things that Christ has done for me that he can do for you. But we end up judging. We end up pointing the finger. We end up pushing people aside because we think that we're better than it. Because just because you find who Christ is in your life, you, we don't apply the same rules that how we end up getting to a point A to point B. And people need to see that. If they don't see it, then you become part of the problem. And you have no business to be holding the rock that big. You know, because now it becomes a weapon instead of uh, medication. Amen? True. Amen. Most, most of us that, that uh, attend or hold a position and we stop preaching the word of God, and the, the very first thing is that we start doing is we start pointing the finger. Mm -hmm. And we start highlighting all their flaws and their shortcomings, and next thing you know, there's nobody in the church to, to minister to. Because you're really not minister, ministering to anything. You're actually opening up more swords. And then now they go out and they complain and they bicker and they moan and they have nowhere to go because then their trust issues become a hundredfold. And it gets even worse because now they're, they're actually pointing back and saying, let me tell you something about this church. I went there to eat and try to get fed by their word and what they did is they opened up swords. That's what they did. They opened up swords. And if, if we're supposed to encourage one another, how can we, how can we be bickering and fighting and, and try to encourage other people if we're fighting in the church? If churches are fighting in another church, and we're supposed to be the, the sower of seeds. Now, here's another thing is, the seed that you're sowing, is it edifying or is it destroying? Are you bearing fruit? So that the seed that you're bearing is actually going to grow into other more fruit. Or should I say other fruit? Because Polly heard me say other more fruit. She'd be like children. <laughs> <laughs> I had to clarify that. She's still a school teacher. <laughs> but that's, that's the problem that we have in the church. It's not, I don't want to pick on the church all the time, but if we can't iron out our own issues, you know what I'm saying, then how can we actually preach the gospel with a wrinkled shirt and then saying, telling other people that they need their clothes ironed. And when we haven't even ironed our own clothes out. You know, this gospel is supposed to be for those that are in need. You know, but we got so comfortable that we act like we don't need God. And if we act like that, then what you're doing is you're, 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 you're putting God in a you're defranchising the power of what God is, what God's all about. You know, we, you know, you're not investing in God. You're not investing in people. You're not actually in the game. And that's what one of the things that we need to do as Christ followers. We need to understand that this is what we, we're here to do. That's our purpose, our calling, and that's to edify those that are in need. You know, you don't try to have a cookout and then there's no food here.
there's no plates there. Don't try to offer somebody a cookout and you ain't got nothing on the table for them to eat. They came over to eat. You know, I, I got a I got a, I got a swimming pool. So imagine if I said, y'all can come over the house and uh, I got a nice swimming pool in my backyard and it's broken. I already knew it was broken. So you come over the house with swim trunks or bathing suit and it's 90 degrees out and you can't even use a swimming pool. Yeah, I got a swimming pool, but I didn't tell you it was broken. <laughs> <laughs> so if I tell you, yeah, this, 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 this works. Mm -hmm. the, the, the scriptures work. This Bible works. But it, it doesn't work for me because I ain't using it. I ain't applying it to my life. So how can I feed somebody when I ain't even eating off the sick? I'm not eating myself. So then I'm just going by. I'm just winging. And that's the thing. That that boulder that you told it, it becomes either a weapon or a weight. If when you put, when you mm -hmm. apply the scriptures to your life, mm -hmm. it becomes a weapon or weight. Because you're faking the funk on the monster, and you're not actually applying it to your life. You know, those, you know, you try to go get a job as as whatever the, the, the description of that job applies. So if it says management and you never manage anything, you go there, you're not gonna get that job because it doesn't apply to you. It, you're not applying that job to yourself. You know, so here we are, God says to, to us, I'm asking anybody that's ever been a sinner to come to me, I'm gonna straighten you out, but you have to apply this to your life. First of all, a lot of people won't even claim that they're wrong. Their, 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 their uh, pride and their ego won't say that they need the, to need God or to need anything. They won't even go down that road until something happens. Until something happens, that's when they apply it or they'll, they'll, they fall in need. You know, and, and to see you when you do apply this to your life, and, to, and you find yourself in persecution, and you're going through trials and tribulations, and you're still applying this because it works. Even though people see you going through trials and tribulations, and even though people see you going through trials and tribulations, they know that you're counting on God. 